So what would you say to the naysayer that says, well, that's not a, then that, that's that's not a real sport. sport. What I love about rowing, especially in college, is that it is the true sport that meets the mandate of collegiate athletic experience. It's supposed to be about education. It's supposed to be something that supports what you're doing in life. And rowing is the perfect example of that. There's a disproportionate amount of attention that's placed on sports like football and men's basketball. And there's a reason for that. Those two sports generate the vast majority of revenues. And it's underwriting opportunity for hundreds and hundreds of athletes. It's important for people to, to realize that and to hear that story. that have rowed in your class, there's about 200 women that come out a year that sign up and show up. And look at how many we have now, right? You guys are the tough ones, or the crazy ones, or both. <laughs> Let's go! We tend to attract athletes that are tough, they may or may not have rode before, but they want to see how hard they can push. I just saw it online and I was like, that looks cool. I did not have any prior experience rowing. Remember, your head's in a tunnel. If you lift your shoulders, your head hits the roof. Wisconsin doesn't really deal with scholarship athletes. They take people from high schools who have never seen the sport, many of them without any background in athletics, and within four years are competing at a national level. Wisconsin's open water in the lead. They're going to be hard to catch. When I came to visit and I see the extensive list of Olympians, that was the moment where I realized I was like, that's something I really want to be a part of. Two off the front, hands up, BG! Prior to coming to Wisconsin, I swore to myself that I would never touch this job with a 10-foot pole, mainly because it was just so hard. Go, 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 go! Get your split! Get it! And there were many easier places to go. I love rowing on the water, and we really don't do it that much here. <laughs>
we have one great big frozen lake here. Unrollable from November through the end of March. The water challenge or lack thereof. We are landlocked more than any other team in the country. Other teams don't know they're really missing out because they think we're on the water all the time. Like, they're not getting this water time. They think they're actually getting ahead of us. Winter training at Wisconsin is tough. All that time is taken with conditioning. We were rowing on the ergs. We were running hills, timed runs, stadium stairs. It just seemed to never end. It's either going to make you tough or you're going to not stay with it. There's no excuses. We say team trust toughness. It definitely is built in winter season. Follow your race plan. Don't worry what it feels like. One step closer to racing season. We have to spend a lot of time together, indoors, learning about each other. What we're missing out on the water we're building in culture. Yes, rowing is a really physical sport, but it's also really, really mental. Your mind will give up before your body does. Like, your body can actually carry on going and going. It's your mind that feels the pain and tells you to stop. You can't not be in pain. That's not the way it works. You have to learn how to deal with it. The mental side isn't there. You can't use the physical ability that you might have. Rowing is one of the most difficult sports you can do. The race distance is sort of stupid. It's 2,000 meters, so it's about a mile and a half, give or take. Now, you can't do six and a half minutes flat out. It's physiologically impossible. You have to train your body to be almost flat out, which really hurts about the same. What you just did was awesome, and it was not a fluke. There's, there are no flukes in rowing. You earned it. You did it. So now, that's your new normal, and we go from there. The lessons that our student athletes learn through the participation in sport, and specifically in women's rowing. I think Hannah moved up ahead of Katie Helmrick today. What they're asked to do pays dividends in terms of the life lessons for the rest of their lives. Without question, it's a storied program. There were a few others like me who had not had sports in high school to participate in. And so this was a special opportunity. In the early 70s, there was a group of women on campus. They came to the boathouse and somehow talked somebody into letting them go out in a boat. Randy Jablonik opened the door and then asked Doug Neal to, to coach us. I believe it was March of, of 1973. Doug Neal just couldn't handle the time commitment anymore, and they'd probably gone through everybody in the boathouse that they thought could be uh, hornswoggled into coaching the, the women's team. And they finally got to me, and, and it was like, oh, wow, $500. I'm yeah, OK, I'll do it. I had no idea what I was doing. I, I knew enough about rowing, I thought, but I never coached anyone. In terms of the, the funding they got, I mean, it was it was intramurals. There's really not an awful lot of money for that. Equipment wasn't funded. None of their travel was funded. They had to go out and scrounge to, to come up with a few dollars just to be able to do anything. We raked lawns and cleaned kitchens. We manned a concession stand at the football games, whatever people would pay us to do. I figured these people have no background in having been trained before rowing. You could say they might not be ready to go full tilt, but there was no reason to believe that they couldn't. We were really, really lucky. I mean, you have years when they just, you happen to stumble into the right people. I, we had Carrie Graves start that year. 
uh, her father had rowed, her brother was rowing, uh, she was just a horse. Debbie Etzel, Mary Connell, Sue's kid sister, Karen. We had the, the nucleus of a team right there. Nineteen seventy four, we went through the registration line. There was this woman, she was five seven, five eight, and I thought, <laughs> Ugh, she's wearing three inch heels, that's why she looks tall. Randy Jablonic goes and talks to her, gets her to come on down. Oh well, she'll she won't last all that long. She'll be she'll realize this is a leverage sport. <laughs> Peggy McCarthy. We found Carolyn Hagee, we found Jackie Zock, and suddenly the holes that had been missing after the first class were filled in. I mean, you get five people within two years who made the U.S. team. They're getting ready to race at the national championships, the third year of their existence. And nobody gives them a shot because they're up against the big dogs. They're up against Vesper, Boston Rowing Club. day of the race comes, it's like 95 degrees, as I recall. It was really hot. And we're under the shade of this big tree near the docks. And we're having our pre-race coach talk, right? Jay, had, he was infamous for kind of standing there and looking at his feet and kind of occasionally looking up, you know. He, he basically said, you train hard, you're ready for this. Go piss with the big dogs. came off the line in the mid-40s, uh, and they settled to about 39, and they held it at 39. And they're coming down the course, and I remember thinking to myself, my God, don't settle. Don't settle any lower. You're out front, just keep with it. They had about three quarters of a length when the bow hit the finish line. It was at that point that all the wheels came off. Somebody caught a, couldn't get their oar out of the water, caught a full crab, snapped don't the boat. And then our coxswain, Trixie, said, we're over. We won. We beat him. Having the history shows that it can be done. And again, that can be a double-edged sword because you can get in the mindset of, yeah, but that was then. And we can't do that. Getting them to understand that, yes, in fact, they can do that. Yes, in fact, they can get to that point because those women before were just like you. You're rowing on a, a lake that was frozen sometimes well into May. And you're trying to get fast by the first week in June. It's just a very difficult thing to do. Once we hit the water, it's game on from there. Our motto has been, get a week better every day. We've gotten a lot faster in this last two weeks. Lay it on the line. I want the first 500 to be so gutsy. It's just such an amazing feeling when you can get in a boat and everyone is swinging together and there's send and rhythm. Trust that you can treat it like the first 500, that you're only doing a 500 and that you guys will have the fitness. I really like the intense challenges that rowing offers. You're always uh, striving for that perfection. Everyone has to be perfectly in sync. When you're on the water, there's this special feeling when everything's going together. The boat kind of just glides and like the water sparkles when you go by and you can hear it. You kind of get in this flow where like nothing else matters. It's feel. We call it boat feel. And it's, it's different than any other thing. You can become more than the sum of your parts and just move a boat through the water in a way you never thought you could. 
but you have to give yourself up to the other women in the boat. That is the art of rowing. And it looked, it didn't look forced, it didn't look rushed, it looked really good, it looked relaxed. Good, we're ready. So, we are honoring Carrie this weekend. We're fortunate enough to have a boat um, in her honor that she knew about and was so proud to have named after her. Carrie was fearless about everything that she did in her life. Rowing at Wisconsin, she was, she was just such an inspiration to so many people. She'd set this example for us to follow and to live up to. We were so aware of that, and it colored everything we did all the time. Carrie had a way of communicating without using words. <laughs> but she let me know that I could row. Carrie decided we needed to race the pair, but there was no women's category in there, so she entered us in the men's open pair race. Yeah, it was the most fun I've ever had in a race, I will tell you that. <laughs> Carrie came in with this energy, was part of the force that drove us toward winning the Nationals boat. one of the hardest things any of us have ever done. I'm, I'm just speaking for all of you, but this is one of the hardest things I've ever done. And like, I'm in the army. Like, <laughs> I literally went to basic training and everything, and this is the hardest thing I've ever done. Like, I am so unbelievably proud of everyone here. You guys are all super strong women. Everybody, like, you know everybody in front of you and behind you has got your back, and they're trying their hardest. Everyone here wants to be here and wants to win, and that energy is like what moves everybody. It's like, Chilling, like I got goosebumps right now. Like, I love that feeling. <laughs> have fun with it. This is like the most fun race you'll have. So I have a little, a little passage to read to you. It's from the Red Rose crew. And it is Carrie Graves on the cover of this book. Whatever naivete or lack of seriousness Wisconsin may have presented on the outside, when it came down to racing, they were transformed. Shortly before launch time, an odd calmness fell over them. Their movements became automatic, almost ritualistic. As they took hold of the boat, listening for the next command, it was as if they were taking hold of themselves. Hands on. Over the heads, ready. The shell was lifted overhead and briefly held aloft. To the shoulders, ready, down. 
how light the boat felt now. It was as if it was not a boat, but merely a conduit that would take the puny efforts of eight individuals and somehow amplify them into a much greater force. More than equipment or strategy or anything else, it was the essence of rowing power, the trust in the one. If you wanted to carry the battle image forward, then rowers weren't a group of soldiers, but the weapon itself. As we celebrate the 50th anniversary of this program of Title IX, in conjunction with a world-class education like the one they get here at Wisconsin, that they can participate in a world-class program like this, it's impactful. The best thing you can do to set yourself up for success is relax, stay strong, stay supported, brace hard. And you sit up and you be proud of who you are, who you've become.